Hello everyone, I'm Brendan Marcellus. It's Joel A. Erickson to my left. Let's talk about the passing game, Joel. A lot of people believe that Auburn's going to throw the ball a little bit more this season. Coaches have not denied it. Damian Craig has said they're going to do it. They've got weapons, Duke Williams being the primary guy. They need other guys to step up beyond him, especially with Sammy Coates gone, Quan Bray gone. But they feel good about what they have. But also, with Jeremy Johnson being able to throw all the routes, uh, as Brett Lashley said today, they're going to want to do some different things in the passing game this season. Yeah, I think the spot that most of us are going to focus in on is that Sammy Coates role. Uh, obviously, they lose Quan Bray, guy who had a lot of usage, a lot of targets last year. But they return Marcus Davis, who's, you know, I mean, he's a guy that we know what he can do. Uh, we know that they can get him the ball out of the slot. Seems like uh, every time he catches the ball, it's a 30-yard game. And it's a really important one uh, what the last couple of years. So that, that we, I don't know, maybe we shouldn't be, but we're kind of penciling him in there. The, the, deep, the deep one... Two guys to watch. Uh, one is Tony Stevens, uh, who Brandon's asked a lot about so, so far, uh, kind of off of some stuff the quarterbacks have said. And the other one's Ricardo Lewis. Ricardo Lewis said at the bowl game that like, he wanted to play the Sammy Coach role, but Rhett Lashley said today, yeah. and this is something I've thought for a while, if Ricardo Lewis can ever put it together, he could be the most complete receiver on this team. We've seen him uh, take, you know, he can handle bubble screens, he can take an intermediate route and turn it into a big one, he can go deep. He can really do everything problem for him is consistency. You know, this is a receivers group that should be quick, fast, that you're able to isolate and get them, get a short pass out, and then be able to attack the perimeter and run up field. We have not seen that the last two seasons, and I think a lot of that had to do with just Nick Marshall. Uh, you saw that very first game in his career against Washington State. They threw some bubble screens and short passes, even to CJ, I remember. And they just weren't quite working out with the timing, and he was overthrowing guys. They went away from it. And defenses would spread themselves right. to deal with his running. So I think that what you're going to see is a little bit more of that. I asked Red about if, if maybe they could speed up the offense by doing that, by attacking the perimeter, throwing these quick passes. Um, that's possible, but I think what you're going to see in the passing game is not necessarily Jeremy's going to be throwing the ball down the field a lot. Is They're going to try to attack the edges a little bit, do everything. Whereas Nick Marshall in the last couple of years was just throw deep, throw deep, and then maybe throw a quick out. Um, they're gonna they're gonna mix it up quite a bit. Yeah, I think you're gonna see more of so a, more roles for yeah, the receivers. More, yeah, and so that gives guys opportunities to shine. Yeah, another guy to watch. We didn't we haven't really asked about him yet, but I wonder if Melvin Ray doesn't take over that red zone red zone guy, receiver yeah. role that CJ using will play. Uh, anyway, lots of stuff to watch. Um, well, lots of stuff to ask people about. We don't get to watch much, uh, but as spring practice progresses. Uh, enjoy the warm weather.